so far we have discussed a few problems on classical thermodynamics. We will now discuss few problems on statistical mechanics. So, for problem 1 we will start with a very simple problem. It says consider a model magnet of n dipoles each of which may exist in either of two states or orientations for the case n equals to 2 when only two dipoles are present identify explicitly and count the different microstates associated with each possible energy macrostate. Identified by each possible value of the system, system energy E. Consider the formula for the energy of the system E n is minus 2 m h plus 2 m h times n where a n is the number of dipoles in the excited state. The problem itself looks very complicated, but it is very simple problem. It is a problem based on the concept of macrostates and microstate. The problem says consider a model magnet of n dipoles each of which may exist in either of two states or orientations. For the case n equals to 2, identify explicitly and count the different microstates associated with each possible energy macrostate identified by possible value of the system energy E. Consider the formula for the energy of the system E n is minus 2 m h plus 2 m h times n, where n is the number of dipoles in the excited state. Now, how to solve this problem? So, we have two dipoles. So, dipoles can be of up spin or down spin. Okay. So, we can write the macro state like when both dipoles are in the up spin orientation, a 
and number of microsteries so when both the dipoles are in upspin orientations we have only one microstate means both the dipoles are in the upspin states and what is the energy value here okay so here a n equals to 2 we consider upspin state as uh, excited state so here n is 2 and e n if we substitute we get minus 2 m h plus 2 m h times 2 and it gives us plus 2 m h. So, this is one macro state. Second possibility is one dipole is up spin, another is down spin. So, number of possible orientations are the first dipole is in up spin state and the second dipole is in, is in down spin st state or first dipole in down spin state and the second dipole is in up spin state. So, the, so here number of microstate is in the first case number of microstate is 1 and in this case number of microstate is 2 and value of E n here is 0 because if we substitute the value of n equals to 1 in the energy expression we get energy value 0. And the third possibility here is both the dipoles are in downspin state. So, we have one microstate corresponding to this, uh, uh, macro, this macro state and the energy value here is minus 2 m h because n here we consider is 0. So, how many macro state possible for n equals to 2 in this case we have 3 macro states possible for macro state 1 means when both the dipoles are in upspin state we get only one micro state and the energy value corresponding energy value is plus 2 m h. When one dipole is in upspin state another dipole is in downspin state uh, we get two different micro states for example, the first dipole is in upspin state and the second dipole is in downspin state or first dipole in the or downspin state and the second dipole is in the upspin state. So, we get two different microstates here and the corresponding energy value is 0 and the third possibility is or third macro state is when both the dipoles are in the downspin states and the corresponding micro one microstate we get only one microstate here and the energy value is a minus 2 m. So, this is a very simple problem, but this problem is based on the concept of macro state and micro state. Okay. We will consider uh, uh, next uh, another simple problem given that that the first excited state first excited electronic state or electronic level of oxygen molecule is 15.7 times 10 to the minus 20 joules above the ground level. Calculate the ratio of molecules in the first excited state and ground state at 3000 Kelvin temperature. The degeneracies are
g naught equals to 3 and g 1 equals to 2 respectively. Okay, the second problem states given that the first excited electronic level of oxygen molecule is 15.7 times 10 to the minus 20 joules above the ground level. Calculate the ratio of molecules in the first excited state and ground state at 3000 Kelvin temperature. The degeneracies are G naught equals to 3 and G 1 equals to 2 respectively. And we know the value of Kb is the value of Boltzmann constant is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joule per Kelvin. So, this is a problem based on uh, Boltzmann distribution. So, from Boltzmann distribution we know N i by N is e to the minus beta epsilon i by q, where q is the partisan function. So, we can write n 1 by n naught is e to the minus beta epsilon 1 by e to the minus beta epsilon 0. So, we get n 1 by n naught is e to the minus beta epsilon 1 minus epsilon naught. So, n 1 by n naught is e to the minus epsilon minus epsilon 1 minus epsilon naught is given and now if we consider degeneracy we have not considered here degeneracy so far. So, if we consider degeneracy we get the degeneracy factor here now we substitute. Okay. So, we get g 1 by g naught here. So, g 1 by g naught. So, n 1 by n naught is g 1 by g naught e to the minus beta epsilon 1 minus epsilon naught and epsilon 1 minus epsilon naught is 15.7 times 10 to the minus 20 joule. So, if you substitute uh, this value here, we get uh, 15.7 times 10 to the minus 20 and beta is 1 by k b times t. So, 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 times 3000 and we get n 1 by n naught is e to the minus uh, g 1 by g naught value is also there. So, we get 2 by 3 here. So, we get 2 by 3 times e to the minus 15.7 by 15.7 by e to the minus 4.14 and if we calculate further this one, we get n 1 by n naught, the value of n 1 by n naught gives us the value of 0 0.015. So, this is again a simple problem. So, what we did here, we considered a Boltzmann distribution here and Boltzmann distribution says n y by n is g i e to the minus beta epsilon i by q, q is the partition function here, where g i is the degeneracy of ith level. So, it gives us uh, n 1 by n naught is g 1 by g naught times e to the minus beta epsilon 1 by e to the minus beta epsilon naught and if we further simplify, if we put all the values here and we get n 1 by n naught is 0 0.015. So, again this is a very simple problem. Now, we will discuss a slightly difficult problem. Okay. Third problem says how much heat must be added to a system at 300 Kelvin temperature for the 
number of accessible states to increase by a factor of 10 to the 10. So, third problem states how much heat must be added to a system at 300 Kelvin temperature for the number of accessible states to increase by factor of 10 to the 10. Now, how do we start this problem? Okay, so, we need to calcul calculate heat here or if we consider the process reversible one, we need to calculate Q reversible here. So, in order to calculate Q reversible, we need to calculate delta S. Okay, delta S for this process means we are we are adding heat to a system. So, there is a change in entropy of the system here that we need to calculate from the number of microstates, okay, accessible states. So, we know S is K V L and W. So, delta S is K V L N W 2 by W 1 and this W 2 by W 1 this is given this is 10 to the 10. So, we get delta S is K V L N 10 to the 10. So, we get 10 K V ln 10. So, we get delta S, once we get delta S, so Q reversible is T times delta S and the value of T is 300 Kelvin here. So, th so this one is joule per Kelvin here, the unit of delta S. So, 300 Kelvin times 10 kV ln 10 joule per Kelvin. So, we get Q reversible is 3000 times 1.38 times 10 to the 23. Now, we substitute the value of k v here, the Boltzmann constant, then l n 10 is joule and then we can further simplify this. We can further simplify, simplify it, we get the heat required to increase the number of accessible state by a factor of 10 to the 10 at 300 Kelvin. So, this is the answer. Now, we discuss uh, another problem. Consider a system of n number of non-interacting distinguishable particles where each particle can be in two energy levels only. The lowest one called the ground state
is non degenerate non degenerate and its energy is considered to be zero zero of energy the other one at energy epsilon is doubly degenerate considering canonical ensemble calculate internal energy entropy and specific heat at constant volume cv of the system this is again a very straightforward problem and this problem says consider a system of n number of non interact non interacting distinguishable particles where each particle can be in two energy levels only the lowest one called the ground state is non degenerate so the 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 degeneracy of the ground state is 1 and its energy is considered to be 0 0 of energy the other one at energy epsilon is doubly degenerate considering canonical ensemble calculate the internal energy entropy and specific heat at constant volume of the system so as i said this is again a very simple problem so how do we start with huh? so the given epsilon 1 is ground state energy equals to 0 and g 1 is 1 degeneracy of ground state. epsilon 2 is the energy of the excited state and the value of epsilon 2 is epsilon and g 2 is the value of the g 2 is value of g 2 is 2. So, this is g 2 is degeneracy of excited state. And the all particles are non interacting and distinguishable. Okay. So, we need we will apply here the concept of molecular partition function. Q the molecular partition function q is sum over i g i e to the minus beta epsilon i and i goes from 1 to 2 because only two levels are possible here. So, we get q is g 1 e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus g 2 e to the minus beta epsilon 2. So, we get q small q the molecular partition function is if we substitute the value of g 1 epsilon 1 etcetera we get 1 plus 2 times e to the minus beta epsilon. 
So, this is the molecular partition function or partition function of a single molecule, but how many particles we have? We have n number of such particles. So, the canonical partition function. n particles, n distinguishable particles, particles which are distinguishable, which are distinguishable so you get q, this function of n, v and t is q to the n. So, we do not have uh, factorial in the denominator the, because the particles are distinguishable here. So, once you get, uh, once we get uh, partition function of n number of, of our system or cosmogonic system, uh, partition function of uh, n number of particles uh, or the partition function of our uh, system, we can easily calculate internal energy. internal energy of the system u is nothing but average of energy and we know how to calculate average of energy is del ln q by del beta when number of particles and volume is fixed. So, what is the value of q here? Q is as mentioned q is q to the n and small q is 1 plus 2 e to the minus beta epsilon. So, the value of canonical partition function q in v t is 1 plus 2 e to the minus beta epsilon to the n. So, we get ln q n. So, we take log. So, we get ln q is n times ln 1 plus 2 e to the minus beta epsilon. Now, if we differentiate ln q with respect to beta keeping number of particles and volume fixed. So, we get n by 1 plus 2 times e to the minus beta epsilon times 2 e to the minus beta epsilon times minus epsilon. So, we get del ln q by del beta is minus 2 n epsilon by e to the beta epsilon plus 2. So, we get internal energies So, this is the value of internal energy. So, in the value of internal energy is 2 n epsilon by e to the beta epsilon plus 2. So, once we get the value of u, we can calculate Cv very easily or um, so at constant volume heat, uh, specific heat at constant volume we can calculate very easily. So, the specific heat at constant volume we know specific heat at constant volume is del u by del v okay. and del u by del v we can calculate easily. Okay. So, uh, here epsilon is function of volume. So, uh, we need to we need to uh, differentiate with respect to uh, volume. So, we get twice n by e 
e to the beta epsilon plus 2 plus okay so sorry the specific heat at constant uh, volume uh, is defined as del u by del t at constant volume so u uh, t we need to differentiate with respect to t so cv is del u by del t at constant volume so u is 2 n e now u is 2 n epsilon by e to the beta epsilon plus 2 so e to the epsilon by k v t plus 2 so del u by del t at constant volume gives us 2 n epsilon by e to the epsilon t plus 2 to the 2 times minus 1 times e to the epsilon by k v t times minus epsilon by k v t k v t to the 2. So, so, so this is nothing but our to I can write you can simplify e to the epsilon by k v t plus 2 to the minus 1. So, del u by del t at constant volume we get uh, if we differentiate this with respect to temperature we get 2 n epsilon and then in denominator we get e to the epsilon by k v t plus 2 to the 2 times minus 1 and then we get now you need to differentiate uh, the things we inside the parenthesis. So, if we differentiate we get e to the epsilon by k v t and then you get minus epsilon by k v t to the 2. So, we get C v is twice n epsilon to the 2 by k v t to the 2 times e to the epsilon by k v t by e to the epsilon by k v t plus 2 to the 2. So, this is the value of C v. Now, how to calculate entropy? Entropy is now entropy is, is k b l n q plus E average by T. And if we substitute all here, we get n k b l n 1 plus 2 e to the minus beta epsilon plus twice n epsilon by t times e to the beta epsilon plus 2. So, this is the value of entropy. Okay. So, it all covers how the molecular partition, this problem covers the concept of molecular partition function. And so, if we consider, if we can calculate the molecular partition function, we can calculate partition function of n number of uh, partition function of the system consisting of n number of particles. Once we get the partition function of n number of particles, we can calculate average energy which is nothing but internal energy of the system. And once we get the internal energy, we can calculate C v very easily by differentiating internal energy with respect to temperature at constant volume. Here we need to do the differentiation with respect to temperature, epsilon is, is, is a function of volume only. So, so epsilon is a constant term here and what then we can we calculated uh, C v and then A s we can calculate very easily A s is k b l n q and uh, plus e, e average by t. So, this is another uh, good problem. Okay. Now, we consider another uh, interesting problem here. Consider a two, consider a two state system with a ground state with a ground state energy 
epsilon naught is 0 and an excited state energy of epsilon 1 equals to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 21 joule right and expression for the molecular partition function and evaluate it at temperature of or temperature 3000 Kelvin. What value does the molecular partition function take as T goes to 0 Kelvin and T goes to infinity. So, consider a two state system with the ground state energy epsilon naught equals to 0 and an excited state energy of epsilon 1 equals to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 21 joule. Write an expression for the molecular partition function and evaluate it at temperature 1000 Kelvin. What value does the molecular partition function take as t, t goes to 0 and t goes to infinity? So, we need to calculate a molecular partition function and only two states are available and nothing is mentioned about the degeneracy. So, we can consider the states are non-degenerate. Okay. So, we consider both the states, both the states are non-degenerate. Molecular partition function Q sum over i, i goes from 1 to 2 because only 2 states are available e to the minus beta epsilon i. So, Q molecular partition function Q is i goes from 1 to 2 e to the minus beta epsilon i. Okay, so, we get Q is e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon 2. So, if we substitute the value of epsilon 1, epsilon 2, temperature etcetera, we get since the value of epsilon, okay, here value of i takes 0 and 1 uh, because it is mentioned that epsilon naught and epsilon 1 are the values. Okay. So, we can expand Q like e to Q is e to the minus beta epsilon naught plus e to the minus beta epsilon 1. Now, epsilon naught, the value of epsilon naught is 0. So, it gives us q is 1 plus e to the and value of epsilon 1. Now, we substitute here, we get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 21 here and beta is k b t. So, 1.38, the value of k b is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 and temperature is 1000. Kelvin. So, we get Q is 1 plus e to the minus 16 by 1.38. So, if you simplify this one, we get 
the value of q is the value of uh, the numerical value of q is 1.89. Now, we need to calculate the value of q when t goes to 0. So, we get or we obtain q is 1 plus e to the minus epsilon 1 by so, this is the expression we have. So, when t goes to 0, when t goes to 0, so we get q goes to 1, because e to the minus epsilon by k b t, this goes to 0 when t goes to 0 when t goes to infinity q is the first term is 1 as it is a second term if you substitute value of t is infinity here the second term means e to the minus epsilon 1 by k v t gives 1. So, we get the value of q is 2. Okay, so, this is again a very simple problem. Uh, yeah, so, it takes care of the concept of the molecular partition function. What we did here, we considered uh, the molecular part expression for molecular partition function q since two different two states are available. So, q is sum over i, where i goes from 0 and 1 and there is nothing mentioned about uh, uh, nothing is mentioned about the degeneracy of the state. So, you consider non degenerate states here. So, q is sum over i 0 to 1 e to the minus beta epsilon i and now if we expand it we get q is e to the minus beta epsilon naught plus e to the minus beta epsilon 1 and epsilon the value of epsilon naught is 0. So, first term gives you e to the minus 0 e to the 0 which is which gives uh, 1 and the second term is e to the minus beta epsilon 1. So, uh, what is value of epsilon is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 21 we substituted value of epsilon 1 in there and beta is 1 by k v t. So, in the denominator we have the k v t term. Uh, so, we uh, now substitute the value of k v t 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 times 1000. So, it this reduces q to 1 plus e to the minus 16 by 30 1.38 and it gives the value of q is 1.89. So, this is the new, this is the numerical value of q. Now, the second uh, second problem is uh, what value does the molecular partition function take as t goes to 0 and t goes to infinity. So, we have the expression q is uh, 1 plus e to the minus epsilon 1 by k v t or 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon 1 whatever you consider. So, when t goes to 0 means that is when t goes to 0 means beta goes to infinity, beta goes to infinity. So, if you substitute uh, beta infinity we get the second term when t goes to 0 the second term of the expression q means e to the minus beta epsilon 1 it goes to 0. Okay. So, you can write here. So, this reduces q or molecular partition function the fellow molecular partition function 1. When t goes to infinity that is beta goes to 0. So, q is 1 plus 1 or e to the minus beta epsilon 1 when t goes to 0 or beta goes to infinity is e to the minus beta epsilon 1 the value of e to the minus beta epsilon 1 is 1 here and this reduces the q value of q is 2 here. Okay. So, these are the answers. Thank you.